player safety. By the time you play again, uh, you might have home field advantage wrapped up the Vikings win or lose rather on Saturday. So do you have a plan in place in terms of whether or not you'll rest your starters in week 16, 17, or either or? I've I've begun thinking, but my focus is winning the game because on Monday night because that to me is the most important thing. Um, once we get to next week, we'll figure out next week. Um, but but my mindset this week is all about the Oakland Raiders Monday night football, um, and and if we win that one, and like I've said, pretty much these last few weeks, we control sort of our destiny right now. Um, so that's the focus for me. So the plan would be to play your starters regardless of week 16 this, this week? I'm not going to cross that bridge because you're asking a question that I don't know the answer to so you yet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you yeah. generally have an idea, though, of like a philosophy based when you do have that, if that opportunity arises that you have to weigh resting guys versus trying to keep momentum heading into the playoffs? How, how do you handle that as a coach? You you just make the best decisions for your football team. Um, and if that means resting a guy, you rest a guy or two or three. You know, um, but you also have to maintain the edge with these players. And and um, you got to maintain that, that confidence and that dominating swagger, and you got to keep that alive. And, you know, you just can't go – it's it's not a preseason game, you know what I'm saying, where you can, you can rest in week four and rest all your guy. You can't do that because you're still limited to the – to the roster limits, you know, on game day. So guys are still going to have to play, but at the same time, um, I'm going to be smart about the decisions we make moving forward and, and getting guys rest, if possible, uh, the guys that need it. Um, with, with, Nick specific, with Nick specifically, I mean, how do you balance? <laughs> he hasn't had much work. He hasn't played that much, but also, um, you know, you want to keep him healthy. Right. Um, and that's a great situation because, you know, right now with two on the roster, you you want Nick to play as much as you can and, and get as many reps as you can um, and let him and let him play and 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 continue to work through some things and, and work the rapport with the offense and, and all of that. So, I mean, that's another one that, uh, you know, when we when when and if we get to cross that bridge, uh, we'll make that decision. So do you think that the, uh, the problems that you've had on defense uh, the last couple of weeks could have something to do with Maybe some certain players being tired, and they might need to benefit from that. Well, I, I do know this. I mean, it's been a rough three games. We've been on the road. Um, it's you know, it's a West Coast trip in there. You know, Seattle, L.A., and then up in the New York, up in New York. Um, I think back to, to when we played the Broncos. I believe the Broncos were on the road for three games in a row uh, at the time we played them, and you saw what happened there. So, I, I think there's some something to say about that. You know, being on the road, traveling, all of that is can affect coaches and players. Um, you know, I do my part during the week to, to, to limit the amount of reps that we're taking and try to get the guys, you know, on and off the practice field and, and make sure that they're getting rest and, and all, the, all the proper hydration, nutrition, whatever it takes this time of year uh, to, to, to stay as healthy as possible. So, um, you know, it, it may appear that guys are, are fatigued at times, um, and, and I think it's just a, a, just a, a compounding interest of everything that's sort of taken place in the last month of our, of our season. What's the, what's, what's the philosophy of going with, well, two-part question, going with two quarterbacks, and, and also, I mean, there's, there's a lot of talk about bringing in veterans. Why, why do you prefer having a guy like, like Nate who's been here all along as opposed to bringing in a guy late? Well, number probably the biggest reason is the time invested. Um, if you bring a guy off the street this late in the season, you're talking about spending time with that player, trying to get him just caught up to speed on our offense. And we've already spent the time with with a guy, you know, with Nate, and and uh, we've developed him and, and and worked with him, and um, you know, so that that's probably the biggest the biggest reason right there. Is Robinson in concussion protocol? He is. He is. I know with uh, Brayman here, someone needs. Well, when you look at the whole the whole picture again, um, you know, special teams, you got to look at everything, everything, and then you got to look at defensively the who gives us the best value. Um, if if a safety goes down, if a corner goes down, if a nickel goes down, and, and of course Jalen Watkins is is kind of in that mix right there uh, of being that being that guy, and we've juggled that back and forth from week to week. So that was kind of the reason. What was your 
impression of the way Darby played and how he's played since he came back? And obviously he made some big plays. Uh, yeah. What was your overall? Yeah, the interception obviously was huge. Uh, big play there, a couple of PBUs during the game. Um, I, I think he's still sort of learning the scheme. I, I think there's there's times where do I think he can be more aggressive? I do. You know, I think he can. I think he, he knows that. But at the same time, he's, he's, he's fight, still fighting through a little bit of uh, injury uh, a little bit um, with the ankle, and, and but yet he's he's out there practicing every single day, uh, putting in the time, wanting to get better, and uh, got a lot of confidence in him, you know, and, and what he's done and what he's brought to this football team, and and we just continue to work. You were one and seven last year on the road. This year six and two. Obviously, the roster's better, but are there any other reasons why you saw more success this year? Well, I, I I do think you can learn from from their past, and and I think these players have learned from that, and. Um, yeah, we did struggle a year ago, and 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 now they're having a you know when you start having success on the road, it sort of continues to kind of go down that path, and and a lot of confidence when we travel, and you know guys handle their business extremely well uh, from the time we leave to the to the time we we finish the game, and you know there's there's been been no distractions on the road, you know, and I'm not saying that there has been, I'm just using that as an example. There's there's no no distractions. The guys take care of business. Um, I do agree the talent is better uh, this season, obviously. Um, and and you do lo- you learn. You learn from your past, and, and the guys have done a, done a nice job. Is the Giants passing game a, a tough matchup for your past defense? And going forward, do you think things are going to look at, at, at what they did and, and, and try to do it? Well, the second part of the question, I think it, it – it, like if, if we're scouting, you know, scouting the Raiders and a team goes hurry up, <laughs> Okay, yeah, we can say, yeah, we want to go hurry up, but if it's not part of what you do, it's really hard just to change, you know, during during the season, you know, to, to hold, change your whole game plan. The Giants kind of go up tempo. Um, they have in their past. They did it in the first game, and obviously they did it. They did it yesterday. So, and for them too, I think with their injury situation on offense, it's a great way um, for Eli to get the ball out of his hands. They still can be explosive. They some of it was RPOs. You know, a ball was out fast on a little little play action RPO or a little run run action. They do a nice job on third down with some of their pick routes and and, and different you know moving parts there. Some of their mesh routes and mesh schemes and um, you know and that was their plan obviously was to was to go tempo and, and get the ball out of his hand and then and then you know use the run game when they needed to. Where, where do you see like the biggest benefit of having guys who are on IR like you know Jason Peters and Sproles and Hicks. And- all those guys, um, you know, with, with the other guys. I mean, and just how important do you think it is, like, with those guys being around? Well, I think I think it, for the guys that are active and playing, they they see these guys that want to be on the football field and they want to be out there playing and, and they can't. And so it just, you know, internally it probably gives them a little more drive, a little more motivation to, to play well for, for those guys. And, and uh, you know, our injured guys have definitely been a big – Big part of our 12 and 2 success right now. It's so unusual for like all those guys to be around. Not really, not really. I, you know, in, in my, you know, my personal belief and basically is if, if, if you know they're off of crutches and not on, you know, little wheelie things and all that kind of stuff, I'm 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 good with having them on the sideline and being down there, part of their part of their guys. Doug, you didn't have Nate in the summer for the preseason game, so he hasn't. He hasn't played. Would you ideally like to see, like to get him some reps, get him some snaps, uh, if he's going to be number two moving forward? Yeah, ideally, ideally, yeah. You'd like to, you'd like to get him some time, you know, and some, some, uh, some reps here in the next, uh, you know, couple of ball games. You have some assistants that could get looked at for head coaching positions. What's that like going through where you're kind of clicking into playoff mode, but also? You know, going through obviously it's a very important interview process. Some well, of experience. Yeah, well, the, 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 having gone through that, you know, as an assistant coach, the biggest thing is is you don't let it become a distraction to, to you as a coach. And and you know, uh, we still have a lot of football ahead of us, uh, you know, uh, going forward. And and uh, you know, my my assistants have done a nice job of sort of kind of blocking that out right now and just focusing on on job at hand, task at hand, and. You know, I think I think anytime you have success, your guys are going to be mentioned, names are going to be brought up, and you know, um, and, and and it's a it's a credit to how they're doing coaching their position, and uh, um, 
you know, but but I do I do feel that uh, they can't let it become a distraction to what we're trying to get accomplished this year. So what's been the biggest, I guess, challenge? You guys are twelve and two, but you've had to overcome a lot of things. In your mind, what has been the hardest thing for you personally to deal with this season? I mean, I'd imagine it's the injuries, but you know, we don't know everything. Well, injuries are a big, you know, they're they're going to happen. Um, of course, in our case, it's happened to some starters and, and some Pro Bowl type players and and our quarterback and and so that's you know it's you know um, that's a tough thing to manage you know and then and then you know getting getting guys um, play time you know uh, you, we keep talking about the running backs and feeding the running backs and you know getting all the guys in the game and getting them getting them the proper touches and everything like that and that's 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 a challenging thing each and every week as we de- design the run game and. You know, same thing in the passing game. How many times is Alshon or Ertz or any of those guys going to touch the football? I mean, managing all of that, too, uh, can be tough. But one thing that I know about this football team is it's very unselfish, and it's a group that doesn't really care who gets the ball. Um, The bottom line is trying to win the game. And so managing everything to win, and if we win, then then we just move on to the next one. But um, those are just a couple examples of, of... kind of what we've had to, or what I've had to go through a little bit this year on a weekly basis. Um, but the injuries are definitely the biggest thing. Doug, how big a concern are the, uh, is the tackle? You mentioned the, the road trip, you know, extended, you know, playing three straight games. Is it fatigue? Is it, how big a concern is that? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, being, being a football sport and a contact sport, tackling is everything. I mean, you got to be able to get guys on the ground. and. Um, you know, we just got to continue to address it during the week. It's, you know, again, this time of year, um, it falls a little bit more back on the player, getting their proper rest, getting, you know, nutrition, hydration, things we talk about uh, during the week, and make sure that they're as fresh as they can be. And then I do my part as a coach from a rep standpoint during practice. And, and if I got to do more walkthroughs, I do more walkthroughs or whatever it takes to make sure the guys are are uh, as close to 100% as possible on game day. Are they going to be there? No. But, uh, um, you know, and, and, and tackling is, you know, it's a physical sport, and, and it's it's part of what we do, and we got to tackle. And uh, uh, we just got to continue to drill it. But at the same time, i got to make sure guys are fresh and, and ready to, to be in position to make those plays. Do you know if your defense is missing Jordan Hicks a little more maybe than we thought it would or was going first several games after he went down? Yes, I mean, it's tough when you lose your starters, you know, and, and um, you know, it's it's hard, it's hard. And then, and then you know, Joe, Joe Walker's missed some time, and, you know, so there's your one and two guys that have missed some time. And so, yeah, it can be a little disruptive defensively. But, listen, we don't use those as, as excuses. Um, we still figure it out and try to find ways to win, and we've been able to do that. What kind of role does Jason Peters you stole your seat, man. Kelsey's athleticism, particularly on full box play. Oh, say that again. Start again, please. Sorry. <laughs> you're, you're not in your spot. Uh, no. Traffic. Uh, Traffic. Got it. What kind of role does Jason Kelsey's athleticism, particularly on full box, play into the kind of plays that you like to run in the run game? You know, it's not so much what he can do, because we know what he can do. It's more or less what the defensive front is how does that defensive end play? Is he in a nine technique or is he in a seven or a six? So that determines the type of actions that we that we use with our offensive line. But in the Giants game, that was uh, a conducive scheme for us to pull guard and center and, and, and pull around the tight end. Um, and listen, his athleticism to do that or to snake up to second level defenders, um, haven't seen too many centers do what he can do from an athletic standpoint. He's he's having a heck of a year doing that. Um, even on a you know a nicked up ankle, he's still been able to go out there and and do it in practice during the week, and then it's it's paying off for him in the game. So it's it's a, it's a valuable valuable uh, asset to have from your center position. So I'm just following up on what you said uh, about the unselfish, specifically the backs and the receivers. Um, have there been challenges in that trying to get those guys to buy into the fact that? They're not going to get the touches that uh, because you're so balanced uh, yeah. that they might want. I well, mean, there's, there's always going to be a challenge, you know, with that. But at the same time, I think if you're, and this is something that Deuce and I have done, uh, and Deuce has done a great job with it, just communicating with the guys too. And Mike Rowe's done it with the receivers. And 
you know, just communicate with the players, be open with them, be honest with them, and say, listen, it's this is how we see this game kind of unfolding. This is kind of the, the game plan, and you know, um, you just everybody has to be on the same page, and and um, you know, as long as you communicate, there's 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 really never never any issues. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you, Doug.